Coral Fund Group, a farming fund listed in Australia, was recently accused by Bonitas Research of conflicts of interest and fraud. We've reviewed their accounts, the investigative report, and we think that unit holders would be wise to revisit some of their assumptions. But before we go on, you need to know that under Hong Kong SFC regulations, we can't make recommendations to the public, and none of what follows should be taken as investment advice. The Rural Fund is a fairly typical Australian REIT structure where the trust relies on a financial sponsor to build and manage the assets. This creates an obvious conflict of interest, but it can work well as long as the interests of the sponsor and investors remain aligned. Otherwise, it's simply far too easy for the sponsor to use legalese and creative accounting to benefit themselves at the unit holder's expense. We think the recent Rural Fund deal is a great example of what can go wrong. The fund manager used a complicated structure and some weasel wording to obscure a series of moves in which the unit holder's capital was used to benefit the manager while leaving any downside risk with the unit holders. Now this risk is not to be ignored because the counterparty to the deal is the JBS group from Brazil and even a brief search of the internet reveals their history of corporate malfeasance. The manager is also using some fairly dubious accounting techniques that inflate asset values and enable them to charge higher fees. It has the side benefit of boosting profits and allowing large dividends, creating the illusion of success as well as a high yield. The problem is, there isn't enough cash flow to support this. But luckily for the manager, they keep doing deals and raising capital, which can be used to fill the gap. It looks very similar to a traditional Ponzi scheme, where new capital is constantly raised to pay profits to the old investors. Now, Ernst & Young were brought in to verify the company numbers, but even they admitted to simply checking management data before going on to say the accounting was complex and no one should take any assurance from their conclusions or the data in their report. They also noted that most of the asset values didn't actually visit the assets they value, but instead rely on a mark-to-model approach. We've rerun the accounting data using a rather more traditional approach to costing and accounting and valuation and are concerned about the numbers being given to investors. Unfortunately, we can't share our data with you, but if you're interested, we suggest that you scrutinise the Ernst & Young report and most of the recent accounts, both of which can be accessed by the links below, and we've highlighted some of the key passages. If you'd like to know more about our research, please visit our website or send us an email. Alternatively, to keep up to date with our reviews, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for your time.